five. All right. I believe we are now live. Welcome, everyone, to the Phoenix Hoop webinar number two. Today, we're going to be going over pattern making, uh, scripting feature, and, of course, choreo mode. So we're really excited to uh, be doing this for you guys. And if you have any questions, you can ask questions via the Q&A section if you're on Google or um, if you're on YouTube in the comments section. And we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end of the webinar. Uh, but feel free to post later, too. We'll come back and check to see if you have questions um, later on, and we'll always be able to answer those for you. So really quick, I wanted to talk to you guys about the Phoenix Hoop and what really sets the Phoenix Hoop apart from, uh, from other hoops, LED hoops out there. So what's really cool about the Phoenix is its customization. And you all have the power to create your own graphics, patterns, words, images, anything, and upload it to the Hoop for a unique and a visually stunning show. Um, so it's a pretty powerful tool. And we're excited that we could uh, be the first to bring this to you guys and allow you to do that. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve with it, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple, and it's super addicting. So uh, we're here today to answer your questions and tell you a little bit more about how to do it. Okay. Um, so Jeremiah, the SpinFX engineer, is going to get on, and he's going to walk you through the steps of basic pattern making, and then we'll go into some more detail um, about that as well. Jeremiah? Hello, everyone. Um, all right, so I'm going to walk you through the basics of making a pattern. Um, I'm going to show this in Adobe Photoshop, but you could use uh, the free online editor, pixelr.com, or there's a number of other free programs out there like the GIMP and paint.net. You could even use just regular old paint. Um, the basic theory behind it is the same no matter what you're using. Um, so I'm going to change over to show my screen. Um, there we go. OK. Um, the first thing you want to do is create a new image. Um, you can create it whatever size you want, really. Um, but the width of your uh, pattern shouldn't be any wider than the number of LEDs in your hoop. Um, but I'm just going to make a very small pattern. Um, if the pattern is smaller than the length of your hoop, then uh, the pattern will just repeat to fill up the hoop. So my pattern is going to be 12 pixels wide by 12 pixels tall. Um, the other thing you want to do is uh, choose your color mode, 8-bit, uh, and that's about it. Um, all right, so when you start making a pattern, uh, you want to start with an all-black background. That's that's basically all LEDs off. And then from there, you can just draw, uh, draw in your pattern using uh, the various tools available in the program you use. I, I'm going to use the, the pencil tool here. Um, and I'm just going to draw a diagonal line. And what that's going to look like on the hoop is it's going to chase around the hoop. Um, so th those patterns are a lot of fun when you're doing isolations. Um, very cool illusions you can achieve doing that. So when um, the way the patterns work, or the way the, the hoop reads the patterns, it moves from the top row down and displays one row at a time. So this would be the first frame, then the second frame, third frame, and so forth until the end. So that, that's just a very basic pattern. I'll, uh, I'm going to save that to a hoop right now. And just to uh, interrupt for a second, it looks like the layer uh, in Photoshop that you're, where you're making the pattern is not displaying properly uh, on yeah. the webinar. So yeah, You're right. That's yeah. OK. 
let me try sharing the, the desktop instead of just that window. Okay. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Now okay. we can see it. I'm That's just going to do that over again. Oop. Now that's all red. Now it would be a solid red pattern. We don't want that. Um, so I'm changing the background back to black. And uh, I'm going to draw my, my diagonal line in, in red. But you could use whatever color you want. Um, and as I was explaining before, um, the pattern, the hoop will process the pattern uh, from the top down. So this would be your first frame, then second, and then the third. So I'm going to go ahead and save this pattern to the hoop now. Up there. I'm going to save it as a bitmap. And in this dialog that pops up, it's uh, you want to make sure that you select uh, file format Windows and uh, the depth 24-bit. Hit OK. And now I'm going to set that pattern as my startup pattern by editing the settings file. So that's the that's the play line at the very end of the config. So I, I saved it as test.bmp, so that line is now play test.bmp. All right, switching back to my camera. Um, now I slowed this way down. But you can see it would be a chasing kind of effect. This is just a very small strip of LEDs that I use for demoing here. So this would be first frame, second frame, all the way to the end. Um, all right, so some things to keep in mind um, when you're adding patterns to the hoop, you can only have up to about 110 patterns per folder, but you can actually store a lot more on the hoop. You can organize your patterns into multiple folders, and you could probably store up to probably about two, 3,000 patterns on the hoop uh, organized into a bunch of subfolders. And uh, also, in your file name, you want to make sure you don't include spaces or anything that's not a letter or a number. Uh, oh, you can also use underscores. Awesome. Good tips. OK, um, Jeremiah, do you want to talk real quickly? Um, we had a question the other day from um, a Phoenix Hooper about grouping patterns. She wanted to group her favorite patterns, and you had uh, discussed three ways of possible that she could do that. Mm -hmm. OK, sure. Um, I'm going to switch back to my screen. Uh, the, the first and probably simplest way to organize your patterns would be to uh, prefix the file names with uh, a number. Like 01, that would be the first. Uh, 02, 03, and then it would go right down the list in order. Um, the second way is you could use scripting. You could get you can get very precise with the scripting. Um, and, um, it'll play the patterns exactly how you want it. And then the third way uh, is organizing patterns into subfolders. And as you can see here on this hoop, I have three subfolders, chase, solid, and strobe. Um, the easiest way to navigate those is probably through the Bluetooth app. 
um, which I will show you right now. Alright, so I'm going to connect to that hoop that I just showed you. Once you connect, it will refresh the list of patterns. All right, refresh. OK, so here you can see um, there are the three folders, chase, solid, strobe. And then there are all the patterns that are in the folder, uh, in the main folder. Uh, I'm going to go into the chase folder, and it'll refresh the, the list of patterns below to show you all the contents of that folder. Uh, and it's all the chase patterns. And then you can navigate back up to the parent folder uh, with the, the parent folder option. Now. Um, that's directly selecting the folder that you want to navigate into, but also over in the middle tab on the remote, there's two buttons, previous folder and next folder, previous folder, next folder. Um, and that will, that will just move into whichever folder is next. Um, Jeremiah, so that, could, they, could they remap the remote to mm -hmm. go to next, fo next folder? Yep, I will show that right now. OK, so this will require a, a settings modification. Um, the, I would recommend uh, changing the, the two buttons assigned to next pattern and previous pattern. All you have to do is change those commands to next folder and previous folder. And then your IR remote will move into folders uh, via the, the uh, up and down buttons, the yellow and orange buttons. Awesome. I think that's going to be people. So that's a great way to. Um, go between folders of you know all of your patterns so you can store a lot of patterns on your hoop that way. Um, and let us know if you guys have any questions uh, about that any further. We would be happy to answer them for you. And uh, switch over to me now. Hi. Hi. And I'm going to show you guys um, a couple sample patterns and then how they look in um, photography. And I'll also show you a video clip in a little bit so you can see um, some of them in action as well. So I'm going to do a screen share right now. OK. So this one you're seeing is one of my favorites. This is the rainbow bullseye. Um, this one is going to take up all of the LEDs on the hoop. Here, let's go to our next one. Spiral white. This is kind of similar to one that Jeremiah um, created for you guys in Photoshop. Um, a little more of a di diagonal here. This one is a really cool chasing pattern. It's also one of my favorites. It reminds me of a lightning bolt going around my body um, and makes for a really, really fun visual. This one is dots and lines. Um, it's really fun, and you can always remember that you can change any of the colors out. So if you have um, a pattern like this, you can have it in as many styles and colors as you want. So this one I have in blue, I have in green, um, I have in red lines, and then I change the color of the dots as well for some variation. And then this one is really awesome for isolation moves, uh, and it just blows minds every time you do it. Uh, the squiggly lines create this really, really cool effect. Um, so that is called our IC, ISO and then all the different colors we use there. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, here is 
a pattern with a word in it. So this one says hoop. Uh, notice that the word is vertical, and this is really important um, for the Phoenix hoops, making your words vertical so that they display properly um, when you're doing certain moves with them, when you're trying to capture it in long exposure photography. And we'll go into some good moves to do for that in just a second. Also, I want to mention real fast that this pattern, the hoop word, is um, pretty, pretty narrow, pretty small. And you can stretch them so that they take up more LEDs on the hoop. So this one probably only takes up maybe uh, 6 to 10 LEDs on the hoop. So um, you can make it wider and have it take up more LEDs if you want a bigger word to show up. OK, here's our sun. This is also a really, really cool one for doing like orbital moves and, um, and circles. And then I'm going to show you just a couple pictures. So here's that first pattern we saw, the rainbow bullseye. It's in one of our long exposure photographies our friend Jim took for us. Here's our really cool ISO one. And then the dots and the lines. So just to give you guys a couple quick tips for photography, because long exposure photography is a really big part of having these hoops nowadays, um, creating just awesome, awesome images, and the possibilities are endless. Um, so really, the key to taking great LED photos is using the slow shutter speed. Um, and then it's also a really good idea, if you're doing this, to have a tripod that you can set the camera or your phone on so um, there's no shaking or movement. It gets a really crisp, clear image. Um, and also, we wanted to let you know there are just tons of slow shutter apps out there for iPhones and Androids. And you guys can um, find one and try, try them out on your phone and get super creative with it. Um, oops. OK. All right. Now, I want to talk to you guys about a few moves that are really great for photography. And I'm going to get out of the screen sharing now. We're back. So one move that you can do that basically looks like you're inside of a tunnel is if you stand inside of the hoop and you have the hoop at the ground, and then you have your photographer start taking the photo and you move the hoop vertically straight up over your head, it literally immerses you in a tunnel of light. And it's a really great way to um, show the graphics that you made. We had uh, Phoenix Hooper the other day uh, post her name. She wrote her name, Kelly, and had a photo like that. And it looked really, really awesome. And you can check that out on our Phoenix Hoop Stars album on Facebook. Um, oh, yeah, some other moves that would be really great to do are anything that's vertical. So weaving is a really good move. Um, I also do a lot of behind-the-back flowers for the photography um, we do for spin effects when we're trying to show you guys the patterns in a really great way. So like behind the back, and that can create some really nice silhouettes of your body as well in photo and video. Um, and then another one we wanted to mention was this: the vertical orbit around your body. So holding the hoop out to the side with your hand and moving it around your body in an orbit back and forth looks really cool. Um, and for the photography, really, you only have to do um, 180 degrees like this, uh, which the camera will capture. Another cool one is doing it from top to bottom, so holding the hoop out and just lowering it down to your side, almost like a clock, like half of the clock. Um, so yeah, play around with it. And you'll once you, you do it a little bit, you'll see which moves capture, uh, capture the graphics really well for you. So we want to talk about scripting now. Scripting is a really awesome feature. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to tell your hoop at exactly what time to play a certain pattern. So you can use this in time with music that you're writing choreography to, if you're doing a stage show, or if it's um, just something that you know you want to have this pattern on for that amount of time, and then this pattern for x and y amount of time, et cetera. Um, so scripting, Jeremiah is going to go over with you guys, and he's going to take you through all of the things that are necessary to have a script properly loaded to your hoop so, um, so it works really smoothly for you. 
And then after we discuss scripting, we'll go into choreo mode and uh, tell you how you can do that on multiple groups if you have them. So Jeremiah, I'm going to go back to you for some scripting. All right, um, scripting is um, it's great. Um, <laughs> you have a lot of flexibility to control exactly uh, what patterns your hoop displays and uh, what time they display, so you can uh, uh, choreograph something to a song. Um, you can you can actually get down to the millisecond uh, when the when the patterns display and change. Um, so I'm going to show you how to design a script two ways. Uh, one with our script designer tool on the website, and the other way is the manual way, which is just hand editing the file. Um, it's a lot easier to use the tool, though. Um, one thing I do want to mention is we noticed um, that there was some odd behavior in Chrome a while back. Um, so if it doesn't behave quite right for you, try a different browser like Firefox or Safari or Internet, Internet Explorer. I'm going to switch my screen over to show you the script designer. OK, this top window here is the script designer. It's really basic. It's just a timeline that you can drag and drop patterns to. And uh, below that is where it's generating the script. So um, in this window below that, you'll see I have uh, my patterns displayed. So I can just drag and drop patterns onto the timeline wherever I want. So right here, about 30 seconds, we'll change this crisscross pattern. And then, say, one minute, we want to change to this aqua grid pattern. And we'll do one more. All right, so in the bottom part of this window, you can see that it added those with the timestamps. And uh, at the top, you always want the first command to be set autoplay zero. That's automatically inserted in the script designer. What that does is it turns off autoplay so it doesn't try to play to the next pattern while it's in the middle of processing a script. Hey, Jeremiah, is there any way to make the script designer uh, full screen? So we can see it a little bit better. Oh, I know there we go. Is that any better? Let's see, how's that look? A little bit better. It's just looking a little bit tiny over here. Mm -hmm. I want everyone okay. to be able to see I can as much as select as just that window. That would be great. So each of these little dots on the timeline is um, one of the commands below. If you hover over the commands in the script, it'll highlight the dot. Um, you can just drag them around wherever you want. So what we like to do is, is listen to a song uh, in a program that gives us the, the timestamp and pause it when we hear a, a nice drop or something that we want to change the pattern at that point, and then <clears throat> make note of what time that is, and then you know move your pattern to that that point on the timeline as well. Um, all right. So once you have your script, um, all you need to do to save it to the hoop is select the generated script below, copy it, and then oh, let me plug in. Uh, OK, so once, once you have that copied, um, well, I already have a script on this hoop, but uh, I'll just delete that and create another one. So if you're just using one script, you're going to want to save it as script.text. All 
and then just paste that into the file, save it. Um, the other thing you want to do um, is you want to remap one of your buttons on the remote to start the script when you press that button. So there's actually a few commands or a few mappings you, you probably want to add. Uh, this first one here is a uh, map IR power to load config. So that'll make the red power button on your remote reload the config from the start. Um, and then this one below it, map IR ADTV to restart script. That'll remap the bottom pink button to uh, restart script. So it'll just start the script from the beginning. Um, now, um, we also like to make our hoop start on this solid green pattern and just stay there until we hit restart script. That way, um, that's basically, it's just waiting for the sync command. And then once you hit AVTV, it'll start the script. Um, that way, if you have a couple of performers, um, they can come together, you hit the, the restart script button, and then those two hoops will be synced together for the duration of the script. Awesome, and I can actually show an example of this right now. So we'll switch over to me. And let's see here. Get my hoops going here. So here you'll see I have two hoops set to green. And then I hit the pink button at the bottom of the remote, and they sync in time. Oh, crap. Good. I can think of me. OK. And then at 10 seconds, they were set to change to the second pattern, so they switched to the second pattern. And I'm not sure how long it would be on this one. There, they just switched to the third pattern. So you can see how they're completely in sync with each other. And it's really awesome for stage shows and for blowing minds of audiences wherever you go. <laughs> um, so I wanted to let you know, too, for some of you out there who um, are getting multiple hoops and you're doing this for stage shows, if you have six hoops or three hoops or however many, um, and you're not really tech savvy or you just don't have the time to create your scripts, we also offer a service where we will help you customize a show however you want it. Um, we'll write the scripts for you, help you figure out the patterns and everything that you want. So if you're interested, you can always contact us at info at spin-fx.com and we'll help you get that sorted out. And uh, finally, we wanted to talk about choreo mode. So basically, choreo mode is scripting loaded onto multiple hoops, multiple props. Um, and it's really great for um, performance troops and for people who have multiple hoops and they want to just dazzle the crowds with these really cool like choreographed um, patterns and graphic shows. So basically, what you would do is you would follow the instructions for scripting that we just taught you, and you would upload your script to all of your hoops. So, of course, you need everything that we just went over, um, the settings file to be mapped properly, the, all the patterns in your script, the script file, um, etc. And we do want you to know that you can also have other patterns loaded on the hoop that are not in the script. You don't have to remove everything. They just won't uh, go to that. Um, but we did want you to know that. So for choreo mode, you're going to load it onto all of your hoops. Um, however, you can load multiple scripts. So for example, if you have a troop of five performers, and say you want three hoops loaded with one script and two hoops loaded with another script, you can do that. So you can have script A and script B. Uh, and as many as you want, really. So together before your show, you can synchronize all of them with one IR remote, which is really awesome. Um, 
So you want the groups to be close together before your show, usually within less than 10 feet of each other. What we do for our big spin effects corporate events is we hold all of the props like close together before the show. We get the whole team in a circle and it feels really good. We have our like pep talk before we go out on stage. And then we have someone who has the remote and uh, when our music cue comes, we hit the bottom, the pink button to start the script. And we go out on the stage and we just rock it and have such a good time. So, um, so that's, it's really fun. And we wanted to um, give you guys also this idea in your head of you kind of have to play around with it a little bit to get your scripting just right with your music before you go out on stage. Um, for example, if you know it's going to take you five or ten seconds to get out on stage, um, make sure you plan for that in your script. So you might want to add five or ten seconds onto that first pattern if you know it's going to take you a little while to get on stage, or if you have to, um, you know, do the remote pressing yourself because there's nobody else there to do it. Um, just make sure that you figure out a good way to do that before you go out on stage, so you have it um, practiced and ready to go. Okay, and let's see. I think we're going to go to questions now. So. Anybody has questions, you guys can feel free to post in the Q&A section or in the comments section on YouTube. And uh, our first question here is, is it possible to have options such as strobing or must a new modified pattern be created? Is strobing created, for example, by skipping or leaving black alternating rows of pixels? So Jeremiah, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the pattern of strobing? Oh, Jeremiah, you're you're still muted. You wanna repeat that? Okay. There we go. Um, <laughs> so the strobing would actually be built into the pattern. So um, I'll, I'll actually switch over to Photoshop again and just show you what uh, strobing pattern might look like. Um, so here's a good one. Yeah, um, you can see here is like a solid red line and then a solid black line and then another solid line and this would be a very fast strobe through the rainbow. I, I personally really love this pattern. Uh, it, it looks great in photos. Um, so that's, that's really it for, for strobing. Awesome. Thank you. And let's see. We have another question. Does your after it's finished. And so what you can do at the end of your script, so for our shows, our corporate events that we do, we actually have the hoops turn to all black at the end of the show. Um, so that's one thing you can do is that you can put an, an all black solid, just single pixel of black pattern. Um, and so at four minutes after the you know song is over, say play black dot BMP, and it will turn all of the props off um, so that you can exit the stage. Um, you can also use the red button on the remote if you wanted it to restart to the beginning again. So you could hit this to load the config and then um, start your script again. Um, Jeremiah, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, no. OK. Well, so I hope that answered your question. Let me see if there's any other questions here. Okay. Okay, someone's interested in a way to share patterns with other Phoenix Hoopers. Great question. We're actually working um, on something for our website where everyone will be able to share their patterns. It's not quite finished yet, but know that we are working on it and we will let you guys know as soon as it's ready. Um, it's going to be a place where everyone can upload their patterns and share and you can go and grab as many as you want, which is really exciting because that means there's just going to be 
so many amazing patterns out there available for the Phoenix hoops. And uh, I'm really excited to get that up for you guys. So we're working hard on that, and uh, we'll announce when it's good to go. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to add that uh, until that is ready, um, you, you can certainly email patterns back and forth or share via Facebook or, or any other way you would photos. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, I see, okay. Michelle, you just added a question. Uh, would that pattern that I showed look white when still? Yes. Um, as long as you have your, you don't have your speed turned way down. So you can, uh, there's two lines, speed and max speed in the settings file. And uh, you can adjust it so the pattern shows, it displays really slow. Like um, the first pattern that I made, uh, when I demoed it, I had the speed turned way down so you could actually see those LEDs change. So, yes, that strobing pattern would have looked white on the hoop. Awesome. Okay. All right. Any other questions out there, guys? Feel free to ask now. We're just about to wrap up. And, of course, you can always post questions. On the YouTube video, it, this whole webinar is going to be posted on our YouTube page, so you can watch anytime. And feel free to leave questions in the comments section, and we'll get back to you. And if you have other questions, you can always email us at support at spin-fx.com. We'll be happy to get back to you and uh, help you figure things out. And, also, just so you know, we do have the tutorials. We have video tutorial and also written tutorials um, up on our website for all of this, for pattern making and choreo mode and scripting. And um, You can check those out on the Phoenix Hoop page on our website. And if you scroll halfway down the page, you'll see a bunch of little tabs where you can find FAQ and troubleshooting and tutorials is one of those sections where you can uh, watch our tutorial videos, and read some of the documents as well. Um, that's also where you can find the script designer tool. For those of you that are looking for it, there's a link to that uh, in the tutorial section of the Phoenix page. So, awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us and for tuning in. Um, we're really excited to see all of these amazing designs you come up with, and we're excited about all the possibilities of what all the beautiful, beautiful hoopers are going to do uh, with these amazing tools. So uh, let me see here. I have one question that just came in I want to answer real quick. Uh, is it possible to sync hoops that are running different scripts? And yes, we did go over that quickly. You can run um, as many scripts as you want and synchronize all of those hoops with one remote. So as long as you have them all close to each other, they're all turned on, they're all in their holding mode, if that's solid green or whatnot, um, as long as they're close to each other, you have your remote, you press the start button, the script, even if it's different scripts, they will all start at the same time. So, yes. And let's see. You mentioned before that there are apps for phones in order to take pictures. Is there something for video as well? Good question. Um, so video is it's a little bit on the trickier side for cameras to capture because of the, uh, the way that it uses persistence of vision and the difference of how the human eye actually sees the hoop. Um, what we've learned really is that our cell phones take pretty good video of these. Um, the iPhone takes amazing video of the Phoenix hoops. The Androids take really great videos as well. Um, so that's, you know, that's what we found that we use because sometimes the uh, crazy expensive cameras are capturing every single little LED instead of seeing that blurred image uh, in the way that you might want to see it. So um, you really can just play around with it and we'll look into seeing if we can find some video apps that we like that we would want to recommend to you guys. guys so we'll... Uh, Look into that, and we'll let you know. We'll post it on our Facebook page or on our website if, uh, if we find some good ones so we can share that with you. Okay. Let's see. Any other last-minute questions, guys? Be happy to answer. 
All right. I think that's it. So again, I want to thank you and wish you the best of luck with your pattern making and scripting and choreography. Have so much fun with these hoop guys. We're really excited that we, we have them out there in the world now and we can shine our lights so bright and inspire everyone that lays eyes on us while we uh, you know, create our art, our beautiful, beautiful, fun art. So have a wonderful day and we look forward to seeing you again soon.